Hello everyone, Nathaniel Gavronsky here, and I'm in Lexington, Virginia. Uh, this behind me is Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson was born on January 21st, 1824, and he would uh, serve in the U.S. Army during the Mexican-American War after graduating from West Point in 1846. He uh, was orphaned when he was still a young child and went to go live with his uncle. He was born in Clarksburg, Virginia, which is now in West Virginia. And after the Mexican-American War, he went and taught at the Virginia uh, Military Institute here. And uh, he would also teach so he would teach there during the day he actually would memorize his lectures at night before the before the, the his lecture and if anyone would interrupt him before he was completed he would start his lecture from the beginning so it was good not to interrupt him the one interesting thing about Jackson was that he actually educated young blacks uh, some that were freeborn some that were slaves uh, here in the area which was illegal at the time but Jackson did it anyway in fact two of the slaves that Jackson was teaching, you know, kind of in the, at night. They asked Jackson if he, if he would purchase them, which he did, and he event, they were both set free eventually, uh, even before the war. So there's kind of an interesting dynamic uh, with Confederate generals apparently uh, not supporting slavery. See, Jackson actually, who was really religious, spoke out against the slavery as institution as being wrong in God's eyes, but that it wasn't his position or his purpose to do anything about it. So he, he wasn't an abolitionist by any means, but he also didn't think slavery was a good thing. Um, this is kind of a common trait with Confederate generals. I'm not really for sure um, why this is so much interest, but a lot of these guys uh, weren't born in great privilege. Some were, but most of these guys were... Uh, more or less related to like rail splitter type of people versus, you know, aristocracy landowners. So there might have been a difference in opinion on, on slavery as a whole because of their station in life. Uh, but Jackson did have, there's records of Jackson speaking out against the institution, but he wasn't going to allow the North to invade his home state. But, you know, of course, he from West Virginia, which became a northern state during the war, Maybe it's because he was, you know, set here in Lexington that he decided that, you know, this is where he was going to dig his feet and his heels into the ground. Jackson was a great, brilliant tactician, even though he didn't score very high on the exams and almost didn't get into, into West Point initially because of his low scores. He kind of graduated towards the bottom of his class, but he was great minded, um, was known for giving long, drawn out talks if, or if he didn't speak at all. His, uh, he loved lemons, absolutely loved lemons. In fact, uh, here at the grave site, there are a lot of lemons that people throw over to, uh, for him because uh, he was such a, a favor of, the, of lemons. Uh, he fought under uh, Lee in the Army of uh, Northern Virginia. And in May 2nd of 1863, after doing a, a night scouting looking for the Union lines, he was mistaken for a Union scout when his own Confederate uh, picket officers shot him by accident in the left arm. His left arm had to be amputated and Lee was uh, famous for saying that well Jackson has lost his, lost his left arm and I have lost my right. Uh, on May 10th at around 10 a.m. Jackson died from complications to pneumonia from his weakened state of losing the arm and it was a really big setback for the Confederacy. Lee really didn't have someone to to do a lot of the tactics he needed on the, on the ground. And you can see after 63, the war kind of turned very quickly towards the North's favor. Jackson was interred here um, in Lexington, Kentucky. The yeah, majority of his family is all here. One person was uh, unable to be recovered from the, from the war. But Jackson does, there, does still stand proud here in the Lexington, uh, Virginia uh, cemetery. Uh, there used to be a statue of him outside of the uh, VMI, but they have taken it down. Uh, Lexington is also where Robert E. Lee is buried. He is buried at the um, Washington and Lee University, but they do not allow cameras into the chapel where he's buried, so I will figure out another way of doing that video with the still shots that I've got. So uh, that's roughly kind of Andrew Jackson. I uh, can't go into a whole lot of detail about a lot of these guys, but that's basically, you know, his rundown. I do think it's really interesting that he was so opposed to slavery, as was uh, Lee, but how they actively didn't do much to oppose it and were even seen as fighting for the country that wanted to maintain slavery uh, within its borders. Um, one interesting thing about Jackson is right after the first Battle of Manassas, or Bull Run, 
he actually wanted to pursue uh, the, the the retreating Union officers and the the Union uh, armies that have, you know technically lost the battle. And Lee and Jefferson both overrode him. He said that what he wanted to do was basically take you know as many men as he could go and go straight to Washington and burn it down. So he was like the north, the southern, south, south version of a Sherman, except for uh, Jackson was overridden and not allowed to do that. If he would have done that, and he also can, he wanted to go up to Philadelphia as well and burn it to the ground uh, too. The war might have been very different. He might have, Lincoln might have lost a lot of support for the war if the home, if the war came to Washington and Philadelphia so quickly. Uh, I'm glad that Davis and Lee overrode him because I am glad that the North won the war. Uh, we, there are, I, I can't begin to imagine what the world would be like if the North and the South were two separate countries. But uh, that's uh, Stonewall Jackson for you. If you're ever in Lexington, Virginia, uh, it's very easy to find. It's in the middle of the cemetery. And a uh, beautiful little little town here. A bunch of Lee stuff is still here as well. So come check it out in uh, Lexington, Virginia. Uh, until next time, stay healthy, stay wealthy, and as always, stay wise, Virginia.